Hello and welcome to this Odor episode of the Eternal Law. Last time on Odor's campaign, we saw that the Azai clan, our allies to the west, were being besieged by both the Hattori and the Ikoiki. It turned out to be the Hattori that defeated them, creating a new, powerful clan to our west. In the east, General Munayuri did battle with the huge Kiso army and defeated them, earning South Shinano as the prize. And meanwhile, back in the west, General Kiyonori began an expedition against the Sakai clan. And now, let us continue. The arrangements have been held to thus far, but I would be remiss not to report the contempt shown to us by the Hattori officials at the border post. Further to this, there have been stirrings in the night and shadows in the daytime. They watch us constantly with their ninja. I would move you to consider the Hattori not as compliant, but as deceptive. I have no doubt that my lord will soon consider them a great enemy. We left the Oda clan in the spring of 1548 where General Kiyonori was about to lead an expedition against the Sakai clan to the northwest of our position. I'm using my Metsuke here to scout out the Sakai lands in a little bit more detail than I had before. And I can see that there are no Sakai forces in the area, but there is a Hattori ninja hideout uh, just across the border. It's interesting to know where those are, potentially for future exploitation. Back over there in South Shinano, I'm starting to recruit bow samurai in order to man the walls as part of my whole plan to defend this area against potential invasions. Next we move to the summer of 1548. First I master the art strategy of defense, which means I'm now researching heaven and earth, which uh, as you may remember is the thing I've been gunning for down the military development path the whole time, for the same reason as I did with the Takada, so that I can get new military encampments. Kiyonori couldn't reach uh, the Sakai castle in one turn of movement, so instead I moved him up to hide in a forest nearby so he could watch the developments and hopefully not be too much at risk of a uh, random attack while he's hiding. My Metsuke confirms that there really are no Sakai forces in the area, so I decided to move him back uh, to join Kiyonori's army and this will basically allow the army to have uh, greater protection against subterfuge and grant them greater scouting ability in the local area as well. Back at Owari, I was considering new construction options um, and I was considering uh, building new military forces which I'm really doing throughout every turn uh, that I just don't really uh, include in the footage because it just happens all the time recruiting samurai but uh, this time I wanted to show you that I'm starting to recruit a navy as well something I haven't been doing so far in either the Oda or Takata campaigns Back over in South Shinano, I decided I wanted to move uh, some of the forces under General Munuyori out of the castle and perhaps go and scout out the area to the north that I'm supposedly going to be defending. I'll go and have a look up at North Shinano and see what exactly is going on there so I can be aware of how much I need to worry about this battlefront. I march up here and take cover in a forest right on the border uh, between South and North Shinano, so we can get a look at the castle. It's currently controlled by the Anagakoji, we can see. This was quite an interesting fact for me, because I thought there's actually not a large garrison there. It's possible I could sneak out and take that castle and then defend North Shinano as a bottleneck instead, which would be much more difficult because it can be attacked from all sides, but it does have a similar bottlenecking ability in that you really have to capture that castle to move into South Shinano. I checked the diplomacy and it appeared that attacking them wouldn't really have any negative repercussions. They had many enemies and no friends. In my haste I decided to move up the entire garrison of South Shinano to support the army, uh, thinking I might be going on the assault next turn. But then I realised that without the garrison South Shinano is going to be in uproar, uh, because the population is still unhappy about having had their Kiso masters removed from them, so I exempt them from tax for the next season. And this will uh, keep them in check, keep them happy for a while. So now let's end the turn and see whether these uh, two forces I've positioned on the border can see anything. Looks like a huge Takada army is walking about up there. Meanwhile the Hattori and the Ikoiki are both moving armies around. Neither of them seem particularly threatening at the moment though, so I wasn't too worried. Unlike Boashigaru, 
Both samurai can defend themselves in melee and fire burning arrows into the enemy. So we've got our first bow samurai down in Falcionano, lovely. With speed, maneuverability and strength, this ship has many uses. However, its versatility makes it less effective than more specialized ships. And a medium bune, our first naval unit. There's not so much I can do with it at the moment, but it could come in useful later. And look at this, Oda Nobunaga has come of age. He can now join us on the battlefield. So let's uh, head back to Owari and have a look. Here he is, he's only 15 years old. He's not very loyal, you can see here. Uh, so hopefully things will develop over time that he becomes more loyal to the clan, because hopefully he's going to take over the clan one day. I was hoping but by going into the family and council page I would be able to assign him a commission of some sort to make him more loyal. Uh, but as it says here, you actually aren't allowed to assign commissions to the heirs to the clan uh, for some reason. But while I was here I decided that Kyunori uh, deserved a commission. Seeing as he is leading a large part of our army at the moment, I need him to have some faith within the clan leadership. So I make him commissioner for finance and he is actually uh, very loyal, uh, as is Muriori uh, over in the east. I was considering sending Nobunaga out with a small force uh, to reinforce one of the battlefronts right away, but I decided he needed to mature in the castle a little bit while I uh, built up a larger retinue for him, because if he goes out and dies straight away, then this would be very bad news for the clan. It wouldn't help morale at all, because Nobunaga, of course, is very popular. Now it's time for the actual attack on the Sakai lands. I move Kiyonori's forces, and indeed there's still nothing to defend. So the only thing stopping me taking the castle is the castles, Samurai and Ashigaru garrison. I'm going to show you a few highlights from the battle, which I did fight on the battlefield, and then we'll move on and see what happens after the castle has been captured. If I must train with my guards every day, then fine. It's only because they think me too immature to do anything else. After a few weeks, they shall take their eye off me, I bet. And then I can finally go to the trade board and order a Nanban weapon. Don't you think everyone would be surprised if I kill the Shogun from across a river without even moving an arm? That's what they say they can do anyway. I can't wait to see one. And so the assault begins. The Oda main force in the center made up of massed uh, sword, spear and bow Ashigaru, led by General Kiyonori himself, is moving up towards the south side of the castle en masse. Inside the castle we see the enemy have deployed their elite Katana Dojo Samurai in the center facing off against this main force, along with uh, several ranks of bowmen defending the walls, uh, both on this outer wall and the inner wall of the castle. Off to both flanks of the castle we have assault groups consisting of uh, two regiments of Yari Samurai, one of Katana Samurai and one of Bo Ashigaru. One there approaching from the west and this one approaching from the southeast, uh, identical in composition. The force in the center takes up formation quite far from the castle wall because there are so many bowmen up on the wall that I did not want to approach due to the heavy casualties I would take. First I needed in some way to use my assault groups to decide to distract those bowmen uh, so the bulk of my army could start assaulting the wall. I just formed the forces up in a huge line ready to rush forward uh, when the signal was given. Here we see on the west side the attack group is nearing the castle wall. Soon we'll be inside it's a similar story uh, over here on the east side. However, this attack group is actually being assaulted by this archery tower. It's launching a, a few arrows. So this is going to take a few of my men down, but not enough to in any way uh, prevent the assault from being successful. So here's uh, just a little bit later when we got a bit closer to the wall. I'm rushing the men in, and the plan is to burn down the gatehouse and rush into the first tier of the enemy's defences. Uh, because at the moment the enemy doesn't really have any troops uh, on the other side of this gatehouse to stop me. So if I can open it up and get some men inside, I'll have a good foothold inside the enemy fortifications to continue my assault from. They throw their flaming torches up onto the gatehouse and it immediately ignites, perhaps a little unrealistic how quickly it catches. Uh, but they continue to uh, 
burn it down so it'll take just a minute or so uh, for the gatehouse to be disintegrated by this fire and then my men will be able to proceed inside. Over on the west side my men got in pretty easily, there are a few defenders waiting around. The Boash got outside the castle are sort of firing volleys in and taking out the defenders because they're not really reacting uh, to my assault very well, at least they weren't at first. Back over here on the east side the gatehouse has now been destroyed and at this moment I rush everyone up the ramp to get inside the castle and take up a new position ready to see if the enemy counter attack. Back on the west side uh, the enemy did indeed counter attack. They're charging out of the uh, inner sanctum of the castle uh, with Yari Ashigaru and some katana samurai. My guys are sort of caught off guard, they didn't seem to expect this coming, they're all just bunched up and standing around. And so a bloody melee begins, with uh, both sides not having any particular advantage. My katana samurai start engaging with the enemy katana samurai here. And meanwhile I detach uh, a unit of Yari samurai to start dealing with the bows on the southern wall so I can get my main force involved. Back on the east side the enemy rushed out some Yari samurai uh, to fight with my guys, however they're heavily outnumbered and they're not going to last particularly long. In the centre you can see I'm now moving my main force up since the enemy bowmen are slightly distracted. There's still quite a lot of them up there who weren't distracted. So uh, my bows in the centre took a lot of casualties actually because that's uh, what the enemy focused on. On the east side I'm using my bows to fire into the inner sanctum because there are still enemy units waiting behind. Launching off volleys. You can see they're just standing here in square formations behind the gatehouse waiting for me to come up. Uh, but I'm not going to let them uh, just stand within range of my archers and get away with it. Over here on the west side the melee continues, you can see the enemy's katana samurai are doing quite well, some of my Ibo Ashigaru have accidentally got involved in this fight. Let's see how this guy here does. Oh dear, oh dear, oh god. <laughs> One of my Ashigaru is beheaded and his head flies across the battlefield, absolutely brutal. Back here in the centre we've captured the enemy's gatehouse and my general is now storming in but you can see arrows flying down from the left because on the second tier of the enemy defences there are more bow units who are bombarding the gatehouse as I come through it taking out tons of my guys, my general having a hard time really uh, getting a foothold inside the gatehouse a little later on this was achieved just by sheer force of numbers so you can see I'm now assaulting the second tier of the enemy defences there are still arrows flying down and taking out my guys but there's nothing I can do about it I just need to climb up there and stop those bowmen by force you can see I've already started getting up onto the inner sanctum uh, over here on the east side the enemy had moved down a unit onto the ramp so that I wouldn't be able to move into the central area of the castle and they were sort of forming a spear wall, forcing my guys back, stopping them getting up and they were doing well until a glitch occurred <laughs> and suddenly they just kind of flew off the ramp and died it was because a piece of the wall exploded, for some reason it killed all of them I guess they were too close to it, there was shrapnel or something, I don't know so with this the battle was won because my force could just rush into the centre and then move to capture the enemy's Tenshu basically. I'm fighting with the last remaining regiment of enemy troops which was the archers up on the wall taking revenge for all the casualties they caused me which was a great number. Captured an archery tower over on the west side. You can see my general and more troops rushing in uh, to capture the Tenshu here. So there's not much left of this battle but uh, let's watch uh, this guy here, the, one of the last remaining enemy uh, Bo Ashigaru is fighting on with his sword against many samurai and Ashigaru uh, of Oda and he's actually putting up a pretty good fight <laughs> there are so many guys around but no one can manage to get a hit on him it's part of a uh, potential bug in the AI of this game that when many soldiers attempt to engage with just one enemy soldier they kind of get confused, it doesn't quite work and they start, uh, I don't know, just being a bit silly but eventually that uh, Bo Ashigaru is killed dying a noble death in defense of his castle and so that was the battle won uh, with the exception of a few more Boashigaru who are trapped here in the corner you can see they're just being well penned in and slaughtered by those uh, spears and the battle was won only a close victory because we actually took a lot of casualties but anyway the castle is ours I don't understand what the people of Wakasa have against us we're here honoring the bond of alliance with late Lord Azai and where were the armies of Sakai when their people needed them? Nowhere to be seen, even weeks after the action was over. Lord Sakai probably marched off to some war thinking nothing of the Oda. But we have shown his people that he was a fool. Perhaps time will help. The Iki teachings that have been heard in town certainly will not.
So now we see the battle results, we see that one of the units of Katana Samurai was completely destroyed. This is the one that was fighting with the enemy's Katana Dojo Samurai, and because they're about equally matched, they unfortunately destroyed each other in the battle. But anyway, Wakasa has been captured, and the Sakai clan is no more, that is one less enemy for us to deal with. Now we get a message saying that we have Imperial recognition, the Emperor is taking note of the strength of our clan, uh, which is a problem because that means the Shogun too is going to be uh, looking jealously at our growing strength and perhaps getting too worried. If the Shogun gets too worried about your behaviour, uh, you can be in big trouble and perhaps we'll see that later on. At Wakasa I decided to burn down the stables they had because they had developed their castle town to be entirely military based and I wanted to convert it to be a little bit more economically viable so I burned down the stable to make room for a marketplace a little bit later. So here is where the capital is, Kyoto is just here on the map uh, so we're actually quite close to the capital. I could come up around here around this mountain range and down into the capital if I wanted to take it through the uh, Tango Tamba region uh, but it's not exactly an easy task, there'll be plenty of defenders so I need to prepare for something like that. Back over on the west side we can see there is a uh, moderately large Takeda army sitting just within uh, visual range in North Shinano. It's pretty likely that they're going to try and occupy North Shinano permanently, so my whole plan to capture the area is pretty much not going to work. I decided to uh, combine all the forces I had up on the border into one army for added security. Then I decided to uh, cross over the road so I could have a little bit of a better view of the road heading down to Kai so I'd be able to see whether the Takeda were moving more forces up to the northern side of their territory or not. And so we end the turn, heading into the winter. The Takeda indeed uh, are moving large amounts of men up the road into North Shinano. Meanwhile the Hattori here are moving south it seems they intend to invade uh, the small clan to my southwest, the Kitapatake, which seems kind of mean because those guys are very peaceful, they never did anything to anyone, so the Hoatori, to me, seem to be overly aggressive in this action. It looks like the Kitapatake are actually being attacked from the west as well. I offer this. Now we get a message from the Imagawa, they are asking for peace, even though I'm not really fighting with them, it's because the Tokugawa, my vast clan, are fighting with them. Uh, so they have to go through me to negotiate this peace deal. So I decided that uh, if they want peace, I was going to make a large demand. I was going to ask them to become a vassal clan as well. So I'd, I would have both the Imagawa and the Tokugawa defending my southeastern approach. Your words have merit, and I'm sure my lord will approve. I accept your counter proposal. So they seem to accept it, but you can see the guy here kind of <laughs> slaps his knee. I think he wasn't too happy about having to accept that vassalship deal, but they go for it. So this means one fewer enemy and this a forced ally for now. Ship should be used solely for trade. If caught up in battle, its best plan of attack is flight. We've recruited the first trade ship. Uh, you can use trade ships to trade with uh, foreign countries, but I'm not really in a good position to do that at the moment, but it might happen later on. We see that the Anagakoji have been destroyed up here in Hida. They were actually destroyed by the Iko Iki invading Hida whilst the Takara captured North Shinano and wiped out the remnants of their forces. Basically this means there are two large forces up there that I need to think about, especially with Miriuri's army. Meanwhile the Date, far to our east, have been destroyed so let's have a look at their clan destroyed video. Date are specialists in the no daichi, the large uh, two-handed samurai sword. They're a particularly effective unit in this game, they're essentially a type of uh, infantry cavalry mix. Infantry who are specialised in charging into the enemy and just whomping into their ranks. So here we get the confirmation that peace has been negotiated with the Imagawa. Here's the remaining Imagawa territory um, with a small force I guess they were being depleted by a war with the Tokugawa and perhaps with them. Um, well, then I think they're allied to the Takeda over here. You can see the Takeda control uh, Izu, Sagami, Kai, and now North Shinano. So they're really spreading uh, 
uh, their empire into a big uh, linear shape trying to split Japan in two basically um, but they're certainly a powerful force and in response to this I'm moving Munayuni's army back from the border a little bit just so it's less likely that they'll be seen at the same time I'm recruiting new samurai here to add to the strength of their force my scouts say they number in the tens of thousands they march up and down the highway to Kai with feet that shake the earth the thunder of their cavalry echoes between the great mountains I am making secret preparations to hold the Shinanu Pass in the event of invasion. You may expect success, but for the sake of my men I must request additional samurai be sent to bolster the camps. It would be a great dishonor to see my Ashigaru, our people, stand alone. And so now the turn is ending as we move into the spring of 1549. The Tokugawa are moving their forces back from the battlefront against the Imagawa, the war now being over. We see more movement of large Takata forces wandering around on their various borders. The Hattori attack the Kitabatake and defeat them. So the Hattori have grown even stronger and a large Ikoiki army is put to the field up in Echizen. Slightly worrying, we'll see where they go with that. Here we see the Ashikaga Shogunate is sending a Buddhist monk <laughs> towards the Ikoiki lands, uh, I guess to try and convince them out of their heretical ways. We'll what? see if he succeeds. Just moving, this small ship carries archers armed with deadly fire arrows, capable of reducing enemy ships to dust. Recruited the first Boko Boya, basically a very small ship, not very effective in battle. Now I get this message saying I have the opportunity to increase my speed of research in either the military or civil spheres and I went for military because this means that heaven and earth which I've been gunning for for a while is going to come a little bit faster probably in two turns now I think it says it would have been something like four before and then maybe I can use the other two turns of bonus research it's going to give me uh, to work out some matchlock stuff military access to the Hattori has been cancelled for some reason they decided to renegade on the deal that we had before so I'm no longer allowed to access their lands which suddenly means my territory at Wakasa is cut off from the rest of the Oda lands it can't be reinforced anymore so this is actually rather an issue and I was quite angry with them for just suddenly going back on the deal but they haven't gone back on the part of the deal where they have access to my lands oh no incredibly cheeky now I get another message saying that the Hattori have declared war with the Ikoiki, so at least this means they're going to be distracted uh, from me if they were planning something. We get a trait saying that Munayuri has gained the trait of devotion. He is now extremely loyal to the clan, which is excellent news. Munayuri seems like a very fine chap. He's extremely loyal. The only thing making him less loyal is uh, it says upstart generals, which basically just means Nobunaga did something to annoy him, and he's annoyed that Nobunaga is now a general. Anyway, back over at Rokasa, I start recruiting some Yari Ashigaru to act as a, uh, a repressive garrison to enable me to move the rest of the force out of the castle and perhaps get involved in this uh, war against the Iko Iki since I uh, do feel kind of threatened by their large empire. Over on the east I'm moving more forces up to support Miriyuri's uh, army up at the passes. So now we end the next turn. The Tokugawa are continuing to uh, re-garrison their castles with their main forces. It will be interesting to see what they do with the rest of their army now they're not at war with the Imagawa. The Hattori armies seem to march around. They're marching a small force up towards the Ikoiki lands which seems to be a bit of a bad idea. And you can see here the Ikoiki immediately marches down and pushes them back. And a second Ikoiki army appears and then they declare war on me. I don't really see why but it looks like they're going to force this issue. I must admit I was planning to declare war on them but fine. War it is then. Now you will feel the people's righteous fury. It's a little bit earlier than I would have hoped because I wanted to build up one more powerful army before I really did it. But the war is going to have to happen now by the looks of things. The big worry is that I the Iko Iki force moving into the Hattori lands could also uh, spin round and attack Mino, so I need to be kind of careful about where they're going to go with that army. You can see that the Buddhist monk actually incited a Buddhist rebellion up in Echizen, but the rebellion was crushed by the Ikoiki forces. Two trade agreements are broken in this turn, so our income's going to be falling, which isn't a good thing considering that a new war has just been started. 
Here's the Iko Iki Force. It's absolutely huge and I have no uh, information on what it is. I decided that in order to get more information I'd send out my Metsuke to start uh, scouting around the area. If I get him close enough he may be able to gather intelligence on what exactly was in that force. We get some information it contains uh, at least some light cavalry and some large numbers of Yari Samurai. So it's not a huge peasant army as I had hoped it would be. It does contain a sizable body of samurai which is rather an issue. Then I sent the Metsuke up north to investigate what the large Iko Iki army up in their uh, capital territory of Echizen was up to. You can see it's also very large and contains uh, some numbers of Iko Iki warrior monks which are a very powerful unit which we have to be careful about religious fanatics who will fight on to the end in any battlefield situation. In response I start recruiting some more men in Wakasa. I think I am going to need a large force because I am caught between two massive Iko Iki armies. Mino here is the uh, main worry though because it is under threat. And this is going to be Nobunaga's first test is to make sure nothing happens to Mino. I send him up with the army I've been building up uh, personally for him. And I decide to uh, just plop him in the forests alongside the road uh, between Oumi and Mino just in case those Iko Iki decide to uh, suddenly vector towards Mino and stop their uh, advance towards the Hattori. Back over on the east side, I'm rearranging Munayuri's force to make it more powerful, switching in some bow samurai and replacing some of the uh, Oda Yari Ashigaru with these uh, long, long spears because they're slightly more effective in a defensive role. And it seems that these guys are going to be playing a defensive role for the moment because there doesn't seem to be any way they could take on those large Takeda armies out in North Shinano until I've at least made them a little bit more self sufficient and powerful. So back at the west I decided to uh, end the turn and let's see what these Iko Iki armies actually do because this is going to pretty much determine what the next turn is going to be. We are going to have to be doing some reactionary moves by the looks of things. The Hattori army marches up and engages the Iko Iki and is defeated by the looks of things. So they fall back so how will the Iko Iki respond to this? They march forward and they seem to go towards that a Hattori castle but then another Hattori force appears from the forests <laughs> and they suddenly uh, run back uh, so they're actually they didn't move very far during that turn and they're actually quite close to my army at the moment but of course I don't have military access to the Hattori land so I can't go out there and defeat them and it seems the Hattori probably aren't going to give me military access and uh, well compounding this I get this message a ninja has been found trying to sabotage the docks and when I checked it out the Hattori seem to be the masters of this ninja. He's a very high level Hattori ninja. Uh, so it's <laughs> I guess it's his problem that he got caught. Who knows what stuff he was doing before he got caught. He's probably been going around my territory for years. Now this was a great outrage so I just thought Hattori I know what you want. What I know what I want. want and decided it was time to just openly declare tongue. war on the Hattori. This means I'm now at war with both the Hattori and the Iko Iki we're engaging in a huge three-way conflict so and only one of us can really come out on top. You will learn to fear the shadows. watching there'll be more action from the Takata campaign next time on the Eternal Law.